This hour is brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington. Personal injury, criminal, business, whatever you need, Jeremy Temple Law Office will get you taken care of. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. We'll all be flying. Well, come on along and welcome aboard to Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary here on this Monday, February 24th. Thanks a lot for joining us. Hope you had a great weekend, ready to get the week started. Jim Coy with you, Todd O'Leary here as well. Jake's keeping us on the track. Coming to you from the Golf Club League of Point Studios. Todd O'Leary, how was your weekend, man? Next question. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, we'll hear that actually. Pat Chambers, we listened to a little clip a minute ago, but he was t- t- tongue in cheek. But he was <laughs> asking a post game presser about the officiating with a smile on his face. He just simply says, "Next question." But uh, yeah, the officiating was not exactly um, stellar yesterday, was it, Todd? It was. You know what? It was. It was very inconsistent, which made it uh, difficult to. Uh, yeah, Pat and I'm sure I'm sure it, Pat Chambers really feels like it's one of those. Like, <laughs> both both teams feel like they kind of got some bad calls, and and you know when you're the road team, you always every call seems to magnify a little bit more. So you always seem to think that, but you know that's that's we haven't talked a whole lot all year long about officiating, which is pr- a pretty good sign, actually. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you. I now I didn't notice it yesterday as much, but of course. If it's going the other direction, you don't tend to notice that. But here's what Pat had to say. It was kind of funny. Is Pat, when the game's kind of officiated kind of tight like tonight's or today's was, have you maybe adjusted as a coach to what you guys are doing on the offensive end of the floor? Next question. <laughs> he just said, he was laughing when he said it, but I, I think this this was not about the guy asking the question, but more about not wanting to talk about officiating and get a nice little fine from the commissioner's office. Yeah, I, and you know what? I think he could have probably asked just about any question about officiating, and that's the same response he was going to get. I mean, coaches just don't want to. It's not worth wanna, it. They don't even get into the topic because yeah, it's exa- you're exactly right. It's just not worth it. But I mean, I, I don't think. I mean, if you want to sit down and look at it, I mean, they shot 22 free throws and Indiana shot 27 free throws. I mean, I think fouls are generally people's biggest issue when they think that it's one-sided. And, you know, they didn't really have anybody in crazy foul trouble throughout most of the game. Lamar Stevens picked up his third foul in the first half and somehow they got it changed. So I can't imagine they could be too mad or upset. They They accomplished that, but. I don't know. It it was it wasn't a good officiated game. I didn't think. I think it was very inconsistent, and they called some tic tac fouls, and they let a lot of banging go get go, and that just makes it difficult to adjust, for the players to adjust to to how to play. Yeah, there was uh, it, it was just weird. But you know, officiating has been horrible across the board in a lot of like we see some bad officiating here of late and it sucks because it can really alter a game but uh that was not that was not the case yesterday and i don't think that he was saying that but um man more importantly indiana they're playing to me i think they're playing their best basketball that they played all season now they're not playing it in 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 40 minutes is the problem right now but they are playing their best basketball in, in in streaks and there was a lot of runs yesterday in that game man on both ways but Ooh, they almost gave up a humongous lead, and that would have been a catastrophic loss. Yeah, I really would have. It would have, uh, you know, that would have been one to, that would have been tough to swallow. I think we would have at this point started counting, you know, the home losses and and gone with the Arkansas, Maryland, Purdue, and and if they'd have lost that game yesterday, we would have looked at those and been like, man, it's it's going to be a season of what if because. You know they they probably should they should have won the Arkansas game and they should have won the Maryland game the Purdue game I think Purdue controlled that throughout especially the second half but I think know, that's costing them five seed lines Todd those three losses oh yeah oh there's no question about it I mean it, it is their their resume would be would be super strong right now for talking about I, the ceiling for them would be like a four seed if they had those 
but but uh, you know as they sit right now i think they're still in that 10 11 range yeah what do they have like is it six quad one wins right now yep well and with <clears throat> minnesota will not be a quad one win wisconsin at home will be a quad one win though so they have an opportunity to get one there to get one at purdue and Illinois, Illinois. Yep. yeah, which I don't see that happening. But I think that Wisconsin and, and Purdue are, are legitimate opportunities to get a, a, a win, another quad one win, which right. would what give them eight. I mean, yeah, there's. I, I'm not really concerned about Indiana being in the tournament now. It's about the seed line is, is all it is. I think. Yeah, and and, and I I think I agree. With that. I mean, it would take they would have to lose all four remaining games in the first game of the Big Ten tournament for. You know, for I think them to really have to sweat it out too much, but it would just be nice. It was fun in the post game last night to to just be able to talk about you know possible seating opportunities because you know they're playing well and we got to ride the trend of them playing well and they're you know that right now they're bouncing up the net rankings and the Pomeroy Ken Palm and all those and they're getting themselves up there to you know the discussion of of how high a seed can you get. And hopefully we'll sit back and laugh about February 15th. Everyone was talking about Indiana playing in the play in game on Tuesday. And, and hopefully they play themselves up to, you know, a six or seven seed. Or, or Indiana could become one of those very dangerous teams of the tournament that you do not want to play that gets in at the end playing their best basketball of the season. But because they hadn't done that up to that, they don't bounce up very high. And then a better team ends up playing a team like Indiana, who is a lot better than what their seed would suggest. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. And, and we talked about that on Friday just a little bit about, you know, the, the NCAA tournament generally has, you know – the first round games are are you know much more predictable than than every other round. I mean, even the second game on the first weekend is is much more difficult for the one seeds all the way down to whatever the other seed is. But you know, it, it just it, this this year is going to be different. I mean, even I don't think the one seeds will be that much different, but even the two and three and four seeds, their games are going to be that much different. I mean, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be crazy. And then once you get to a five seed, I mean, you're going to be playing a big 10 team or you're going to be playing a big 12 team or an sec team. Uh, I mean, those five seeds are going to be playing against a quality opponent and that, and that's, what's going to make it pretty crazy. Yep. In the house yesterday, I saw, I talked to Charlie Miller, former Hoosier and Jared Jeffries as they were taking in the game. Uh, yesterday, along with Christian Lander, one of the uh, the top recruit in the state of Indiana right now, but a lot of people that great game for them to see, man. Great, yeah. great play of Indiana again. And I, we talked about this on the post game show. The thing that has impressed me most about Indiana these last two games is they they they've been up, gone down, and had to come back and do it a couple times. They had to do it a couple times against minnesota not as much against penn state but it was uh, the one against penn state was so monumental that it could have been like three and it was at home so that was even magnified more but the fact that they withstood that and came back both times to me shows maturity and growth in this team and man that's what you want to see at this time of the season yeah we saw some things yesterday that uh that were exactly what you said they're they're maturity things they are they're the team improving um and and you know I think that I think that they're starting to see it. I think they're starting to see themselves get better. And man, once you once your confidence starts to grow, um, you know it's just it, it it can really make you improve a lot faster and at a bigger a faster pace. And you start getting a lot better and doing some things that you don't you know you didn't even know that you could do. And and that's when it becomes fun. And you know these guys have a have a really good week of opportunities with two gigantic road games to, to go try to steal one on. I, and I think that they're playing better or they're feeling better about playing with each other. It looks like that. On it the looks floor. like it. Yeah. I, I, I can't, you know, I'm not, we're not in the locker room, but it, it has this appearance. I saw Justin Smith. There was a picture of him walking off the floor with his arm around. I think it was Al Durham right. yesterday. Your positive touches that, that you talk about all the time. And you talked about Justin Smith. That, that's another sign to me of leadership right there. It was his arm around Al Durham, not the other way around. So right. that's that's the guy showing. Some, and so to me, that's another leadership quality. And 
And again, you said it yesterday, and I'm like, Justin Smith is probably the last guy or one of the last guys I would have thought of to be putting into this category. But right now, from that stat, that what we talked about, he is exhibiting uh, more leadership qualities than I guess anybody right now from that standpoint. And you're right. And you know what, um, you know what you hope he tries to, to emulate is what he hopefully learned from uh, Jawan Morgan. And he can play a lot of that same role. I mean, imagine imagine if he played with the motor of Jawan Morgan. I mean, he's a more athletic player than Jawan was even. And he and Jawan was crazy athletic. Um, but, I mean, I think I, Jawan was kind of a quiet leader. I mean, you didn't see him talk a ton, especially in his earlier years. His senior year, he did a little bit more. Um but, you know, and that's why I talk a lot about Romeo being a difficult teammate last year because coming in as a freshman with all the hype, um, you know, it, it just was it, the dynamic of the team made it weird. No one really knew who was supposed to step up and be the leader. And right now, I, I mean, I don't necessarily think that I hope I'm wrong, but I don't necessarily think that. Justin Smith is going to emerge as the the real vocal leader that everyone follows. Um, but if he shows even little signs like he's doing right now and, and the little things that you're talking about, uh, you know, telling guys where to go, I, I witnessed that yesterday firsthand. And, and, you know, that's a difference. He wasn't doing that 10, 10, 15 games ago. And nobody else is doing it. So the fact that right. there's somebody doing it. Right. Man, th- this team can use any and all that they can get right now. He, he was, you know, something that made me think about it later. He was, he was so engaged in the game because he was, he was seeing things happen ahead of time. And that sounds like it should be happen all the time, but I don't think it has been. And, and I, that was something yesterday with him that I really, I knew he was engaged in the game. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary here on this Monday. We're coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, and we got lots more coming up. Plenty to talk about. Indiana baseball sweeps three over the weekend in Birmingham. They're on a high, they're on a heater. Uh, NCAA football. Did you know there's still seven quarterbacks in the transfer portal, including Peyton Ramsey? Pacers get beat in historic fashion. The NFL Combine has started. We'll hear from Archie Miller. Uh, but up next, the voice of the Hoosiers. Don Fisher brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington, located on the square, 123 South College Avenue, 812-336-7229, personal injury, criminal, or business. Give Jeremy Temple Law Office a call with Don Fisher up next here on Indiana Sports Beat, and we're back right after that. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. For the best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. 
Call 812-824-1100 to make it tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lord, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. TheDailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18 wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Don Fisher is brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington. Located on the square at 123 South College Avenue on the southwest corner. Call 812-336-7229. Personal injury, criminal, or business. Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington will get you taken care of. And now, here's Don Fisher. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary here on this Monday, February 24th. Of course, that means the voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher, is joining us. Don, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Jim. How are you? Good, good. Last time we talked, it had been an up and down week for the Hoosiers, but this time's a lot more positive. If they're coming off of two back to back wins, won three of their last four as they head up to West Lafayette. But man, they are maybe playing their best ball of the season, Don. Well, I think they probably are in the sense that this team, I think, maybe has figured something out. We've we've said that before this year. But uh, really, the last week has been special in the sense that Indiana went to Minnesota, uh, took on a very good Minnesota team, even though they're not having their best uh, end-of-the-season performance. They were really tough early on, and they've got a three-headed monster up there that Indiana was able to deal with. And then, of course, to knock off the ninth-ranked team in the country in Penn State, who's had a tremendous year, um, and having lost to them previously at Penn State by a significant number, that was a big, big win for this ball club. So two really important games for Indiana this week, both of them victories for this Hoosier ball club. I think it really gives them a belief that they can get the job done when they go against these other teams. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I've watched them just, their play has gotten better and better. And yeah, they had some, some areas even yesterday in that game, but both of those games that they've won on the road at Minnesota and yesterday against the number 19 Penn State, they had, they gave up leads and they had to come back. They had to do it twice against Minnesota, but this is, they, if they had to do that earlier in the season, that team would have folded, but they fought back and they've gotten to a point where they fight back and put themselves into a position to win. Well, I think that's the most important thing that came out of these two ball games is their resiliency when things weren't going their way. A- able to finally shut it down a little bit and get the other team stopped and then coming back offensively and being able to put some points on the scoreboard. They were down 10 against Minnesota in the first half, came back, made it a three-point game at halftime, battled there at the start of the second half and then took the lead and really were able to maintain that lead throughout most of the rest of the contest even though it was a tight fit. And they did basically the same thing against Penn State yesterday. They dominated the first half of play. Well, they, they didn't do the same thing. They, they dominated the first half of play and led by 13 at halftime and then allowed a 24-5 to run to start the second half by Penn State, who took a six-point lead and looked like they were going to run Indiana out of the gymnasium. And the next thing you know, Indiana stiffens up. They calm themselves. They come out and they start playing the way they did in the first half. They started playing defense again, getting rebounds, and obviously they they end up winning the ball game by eight, 68 to 60. So uh, two terrific ball games. And I think the other thing that stands out is that we're getting different people stepping up now with this ball club to start playing some of their best basketball. 
And we're not talking just about Trace Jackson Davis, although he is a focal point this week because likely the freshman of the week can get him the Big Ten because of the 27-16 and 16 he put up against Minnesota. That's points and rebounds. And then doing essentially the same thing, a double-double against Penn State with 13 points and 10 boards. Now nine double-doubles on the year uh, and helping this ball club really kind of stabilize in a number of areas. But as I said before, I think, uh, Jim, the most important thing is other people are stepping up. Al Durham is starting to play some of his best basketball, even though he makes it come a couple of critical mistakes uh, at kind of inopportune times. Indiana overcomes those. But Al, I think, is playing much better of late. He's been more aggressive with his play. And Race Thompson has just been terrific, uh, having suffered that injury against Michigan State when it looked like he was having a breakout performance. Um, he comes back, he misses three ball games, he plays against Purdue, doesn't play particularly well because he hadn't practiced very much. And, but ever since then, he has started to make an impact on this basketball team. And with Joey Brunk right now struggling a little bit with his game, uh, going into one of those uh, little slumps that guys end up tending to, to have during the season, uh, it has been really important for race to be a factor, and he has certainly been one in the last two contests. Don, you're absolutely right. He he may be the most efficient player when it comes to production per minute. Of course, he plays a little less minutes, but 21 minutes, eight points. He was four of six uh, and pulled down four rebounds. You're, you're, you can't ask for a lot more. And there's a lot of things that we we know he does that doesn't appear on stat sheets. So having well, that, players like that is is incredible. Yeah, that's that's what uh, Eric Shore pointed that out yesterday on two or three different occasions. In fact, he made. He made him the hardest working player of the game for this Indiana basketball team yesterday because he played so tough at so many different in so many different areas, even though they didn't show up on the stat sheet. And without doubt, to, to give Indiana another front line player that can really factor in, especially in the post like that, uh, huge for this ball club. Deron Davis has started to play some of his basketball best basketball of the season. He doesn't get as many minutes perhaps, but uh, he had a terrific performance against Michigan. I think it buoyed his confidence, uh, and he has played solid basketball ever since then. And, and I think Rob Finnessy is playing much better now, too, even though he's not shooting the basketball. that it, It's not important for him to be the shooter. It's important for him to run the offense. And I think he's, his defense, I think, has been terrific, as it always is, and he has been very steady at the offensive end. Devontae Green, I think, is kind of holding his own at this juncture. He's not having the, the blowout performances like he had uh, in a couple of ball games here of late. But at the same time, he's knocking down some critical shots when Indiana really needs it, and he's not throwing the ball away a lot, and that's really important for this ball club. Jerome Hunter knocks down a big three yesterday. So um, you're having a lot of different people contribute at this point, and, man, that's exactly what you're looking for at the end of the season. Yeah, you, you had seven guys play at least 20 minutes, Don, and, and the, the rotation's getting a little smaller, and the roles seem to be getting more defined, and the players seem to be relishing those roles a little bit more now and flourishing. Well, let's hope that that's the case, because without question, uh, the rotation's going to always be cut down as the season goes along. That That's just the norm. Even though you plan on using 10 or 11 guys, which is what Archie said at the beginning of the season, um, <clears throat> there are guys going to go through slumps. There are guys going to struggle with their confidence at, at times. We've seen that from a number of players this year, uh, Brunk being the perfect example of what's going on with him right now. And, and, and Joey, I think, has been just a tremendous critical factor for this ball club throughout most of this season. But now that he's having a little bit of a slump of his own, here's Ray Thompson stepping up. So you lose nothing on the front line. In fact, he might gain a little bit because Race is a little more mobile than Joey is. So, and, and he's just as physical. So th- those are things, that's why it's a team. It's not individuals, it's a team. And if all, if, if players understood that all the time, I think that would be a real, real important factor. But I don't think, uh, no matter what team you're talking about, sometimes you've got guys that just don't understand that it's not really about them. It's about the team and what you can contribute to it. And you can contribute 
even though you may not be scoring a bunch of points or pulling down 10 rebounds a game or those kinds of things, you can contribute in other ways, especially from a defensive standpoint or from an offensive standpoint, knocking in a critical shot at a critical time and taking the right shot and, and being smart about it. So there are so many factors that are involved in playing the game of basketball. It always kind of amuses me to hear people when one kid is struggling a little bit with his game and how they disparage that guy. Uh, it, it's amazing to me, all the critics out there and how they talk about uh, young people and they don't have any idea what this kid's going through or what his mindset is or the struggles that he might be having. So uh, I just think it's really important to keep a, kind of a level head when you're talking about how critically it is or how critical you can be about players, especially at their age. Yeah, stop talking about 18-year-old kids here, so let's don't even begin to think about th- what's going through their heads. Uh, I remember what it was like to be there, but uh, it, as they look, uh, as we look ahead, Don, this team is moving forward, and, and like I said, I think they're playing their best ball uh, of the season right now. They're, they're, not, they're, they're not perfect, but as they move forward up to, to West Lafayette, I really believe they have a chance to go in there and win that game, and I promise you I would not have said that one week ago, but with how they have been playing here of late, I think they have a legitimate shot to go in there and win. Well, they, they do have a legitimate shot, but, the, but they're going to have to play like they have this week. They're going to have to be tough-minded. They're going to have to be physical. They're going to have to play well and smart at the offensive end of the floor and not turn the ball over, and they're going to be uh, forced to rebound and be tough. Uh, just the week before at Michigan, they didn't show that, and that's, that's the, the strange part of this basketball team. They've proven that they can beat some of the best teams in the country, Iowa preceding uh, that ball game with Michigan. But, but they just they haven't been consistent with it. And consistency is the key, especially at this time of the season. You've got to be able to go out and perform on a very high level each and every time you walk out on the floor. The thing that bothered me most about yesterday's game is that Indiana came out in the second half against Penn State, had a 13-point lead at halftime, and then allowed that whole 13-point lead to slip away along with a six-point advantage for Penn State uh, that on that 24-5 to run. Now, why did that happen? In my mind, it happened because Indiana didn't have the same mindset going into the second half as they had coming out of the first half. Or maybe they did have that same mindset because in the last two and a half minutes of the first half, they didn't score a point. And the game was at a 19-point edge at that juncture when they started having that drought at that juncture. So I, I'm, all I'm saying is it bothers me that teams do not understand because this is something that Bob Knight drilled into every player's head in the entire time he was the coach at Indiana. The most important five minutes of every ball game are the start of the first half and the start of the second half because you set a tone. You set a tone for the rest of the ball game and how you're going to play and how difficult it is for you to get beat in that contest. You, when you set a tone the first five minutes of each half, it pretty much puts most teams, most teams are going to realize they're in for the fight of their life or they're even going to go, even if they're down by 10 or 12 points at halftime and you start out that second half on a fire, it takes the heart out of the other ball club. And you can do that if you go out there and play that way and against good teams, it just tells them that you're not going away. So I, I just think their mindset has to change when they come out of the locker room at halftime because, man, oh, man, uh, that did change the complexion of that ball game for a long time yesterday afternoon. I agree with you a thousand percent. And the only thing that I, if I want to pick on something negative, the only one thing that I would that they're doing is not hitting their free throws. And I, and you probably didn't get to see this because of the angle of where you sit at the hall. But Art, did you see the clip of Archie Miller punching the uh, clipboard out of Tomah, Coach Ostrom's hands? It was kind of comical. Saw the I, I saw the highlight <laughs> on YouTube last night. I guess a little Bob Knight ask, especially on the what was the. 35th anniversary of the chair throw. So kind of funny. <laughs> well, I didn't recognize that either. I paid no attention to Yeah, it was the 35th anniversary of the chair toss. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I know is it really upset him to miss those free throws. <laughs> I did. It was, <laughs> was that uh, Ostrom that he knocked the clipboard out of? Yeah, I was trying show? to look, and I was like, I, f- I assumed it would have been Coach Roberts, but it was actually, I think it was Coach Ostrom. Yeah, because that wasn't Mike. I saw Mike to the right of, of uh, whoever yeah. had the clipboard. I assumed it was Ostrom, but I, 
I didn't know, but Archie was a little bit upset. <laughs> oh, I've watched that thing on other times, just giggling because it's just kind of funny. But yeah, just uh, but they're having a great, great time, and hopefully that, that it continues as they head up to uh, to Lafayette this week. Don, man, I, they have got it rolling, and they they put themselves into a great position as they head towards the tournament. And uh, let's hope that they can continue that. Well, there's no question they're in a great position right now. They have uh, got themselves back to 500 in the Big Ten at 8-8. Eight and eight. They've got four Big Ten games left. Uh, this team could very easily find their way. Uh, well, I shouldn't say easily because it's going to depend on what a lot of other people do as well. But they could, they could maybe find themselves in a position where they could jump up somehow, some way, get into that top four and get the second bye in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, obviously, they're fighting for get a first round buy, and that could change too. They could also go backwards in that regard and not get a buy. So uh, they are just they're playing for so much right now. But you've got to take it one game at a time. And right now, this week is probably as good a t- or a tough a week as they're going to have because they're going to go into Alliance Den when they go into West Lafayette Mackey Arena on Thursday. And then they've got to play a team that has been just unbelievably tough this year in Illinois and Champaign when they take on the Illini coming up on Sunday. So this is a really huge week for this ball club. Absolutely. Make sure you catch uh, Coach or Don uh, on Wednesday, of course, on the, or Thursday for the broadcast. But then tonight is the coaches' show at the Holiday Inn. Well, I'll, I'll check Archie's hand to see if it's okay. <laughs> right. The great Don Fisher joining us. Don, thank you so much, sir. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you having me. Have a great week. You too. There's the great Don Fisher brought to you, of course, by Jeremy Temple Office of Bloomington, located on the square, 123 South College Avenue on the southwest side there. Call 812-336-7229. Business, personal injury, criminal. Jeremy Temple Office has got you taken care of. Lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary. We're back right after this. I'll be your man. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Moore. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with the Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 
18-wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hi, this is A.J. Moye, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. In this day today, we needed a tough guy. You know, we didn't need jump shooters. We didn't need pretty. I mean, in this type of game in the second half, when it starts to get away from you like that, you need somebody out there to start throwing some punches back. Like, at some point, you have to make some hard plays yourself. And Race does that for it because he gives great effort, and that's what he does. He's a blue-collar guy, and he does it every day in practice, but he's really improved. Um, you know, I can't stress enough when he was out how we played the first time. We racing Rome didn't play, but race in particular, first time we played Penn State. I mean, we need him out there a little bit to defend those type of guys. And uh, he didn't play the first time, just you know, like they didn't have Myron Jones this time. You know, we didn't have the guys. So, uh, but race important. I'm proud of him. Try to hang there and keep doing a good job. Uh, he's got a better job at the free throw line because he's a better free throw shooter than that. And um, you know, I think I think that uh, as he finishes the season, he's finishing on a high note. There's Coach Archie Miller talking about. Uh, sounded like Todd Leary. That he said uh, no cool boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty. He, in in different words, he said exactly that. That's kind of what I heard. That's exactly how I heard it. He's right on. He's right on. I mean, you know, they they. Uh, the only thing I think he's firing back a little bit at the uh, we don't need jump shooters comment because if he had some jump shooters, they wouldn't have put themselves back in that position. But that's coming from a jump shooter, so. I'm always going to side on the guys that can make shots and and that, but I, but and I, I get his point and I know what he means. I mean, once once all the momentum's gone away from you, it takes just pure toughness and one two effort and one to two. turn it around. Yeah, and, and, and something I, I did notice yesterday offensively or here of late, Indiana really working on getting good shots. Al Durham took a nice elbow jumper. Uh, Justin Smith into the lane a couple of times. They're really working on getting better shots it seems from an offensive perspective. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think it's been a concentrated effort for, you know, for Justin Smith to um, you know, really make sure that his shots are somewhere around the lane and, and you know, overall, I thought they did a better job yesterday of not running the shot clock all the way down. And and of course, I'm going to I'm going to spin this my direction and say that's because they had a lineup in there that didn't result in throwing the ball into Joey Brunk with eight seconds to go on the shot clock and waiting for him to make a move. I mean, they were they had better movement and they had you know more guys on the floor that were that were spacing it out and able to catch it and drive. And I think that's the biggest factor in having the smaller lineup. Um, you know, it, 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 something that we didn't talk about yesterday, and we always talk about it when they do it, but, I mean, Indiana got out-rebounded by Penn State, which is a weird stat because it sure didn't seem like it, and it wasn't like it was a crazy number of offensive rebounds. I think they both had nine offensive rebounds, but it just was a weird day in that I, I don't think Indiana got the usual number of offensive rebounds they get, and and I, it was just a surprising stat to me that Penn State, they're not a great rebounding team. I, I was surprised to me that they out-rebounded Indiana, but just something else Indiana was able to overcome. Dr. J hitting us up on the text line. You can, too. That number, 812-269-6367. That's the text line. Dr. J says, read that Smith played 31 minutes. That was the quietest 31 minutes ever for him. He played smart and hard, even without taking a lot of shots. He made a big difference. Wish he could see that and keep playing hard. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. You know, it's it's uh, it's something from Justin that I think um, I think he's starting to realize how much he can impact a game without scoring baskets. And you know th- that doesn't mean Indiana doesn't need him to score baskets because they definitely do. I think there there will still be games when he's probably our leading scorer or close to it. Uh, but I mean, I, I <coughs> excuse me. I think in order for that to be the case, it's gonna you know Indiana's going to have to play that faster up and down the court 
you know, style of play offensively. And, and if they're able to do that, then I think, you know, I think Justin has a bigger role and becomes a bigger part of it. Alan from Baird's eyes, very well played for 30 minutes. A little bit of a hookup for 10 boys, took a punch in the mouth and pulled through. Hopefully good sign of what's to come. Absolutely. We've been talking about that. Uh, they've really paired the lineup down a little bit. Like you've talked about, Joy Bronx numbers going down. They will probably continue to go down. Uh, and especially with if Duran can come in and give a little bit, I know he's a little bit of a defensive liability, but if he can give a little bit without losing a lot, that's going to help because you get Race Thompson, who has just really, really become a, a, a very important player on this team. And there's no other way to say it. He has become a very important player. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, something that, um, you know, this, this I, wasn't, I, I wasn't taught this way. Like, you know, Coach Knight never did this. Or, or <laughs> I, I won't say never. Coach Knight very seldom ever did this. But – but when they go with a lineup that includes Joey Brunk and Deron Davis, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to switch defenses up and maybe go to a 2-3 zone or some kind of matchup zone or something when those guys are in the game because they are a defensive liability. There is no I'm not I'm not picking on kids. I'm not, you know, trying to call them out for I have no nothing to gain off of that at all. But it's I'm I'm pointing out the obvious because every time even if Deron Davis scores baskets, the game he went nine for nine from the field. He had he had a probably had a negative plus minus ratio because every time he scored, he gave up a basket at the other end, and and so it would. I, I think Indiana might look into and and it never hurts to switch defenses up a little bit. You know, I mean, make the team have to make some adjustments, make the other team have to think a little bit, and and even if it's just for one or two possessions. I mean, Deron Davis. With his conditioning, and Joey Brunk probably can do a little bit longer stints, but, I mean, those guys should play two or three minutes in a row, and that's it because the pace Indiana needs to play at, you know, they need to be flying up and down the court, and I don't think anybody's going to say those two guys are are accustomed to flying up and down the court. Indiana baseball uh, having a great time of it right now to start the season. They've won four straight. They're four and two. They've swept three over the weekend down in uh, Birmingham, the tournament down there. They beat uh, UT Martin 3-2 on Friday, came back to beat uh, South Alabama on Saturday with 4-2 behind Gabe Beerman's 11 strikeouts. My man Gabe, uh, a sophomore, is he's already in midseason form, man. He is rolling, and then they beat Siena on the uh, Sunday game 12-3. Congratulations, Coach Mercer and uh, IU Baseball. They open up home play Wednesday, Todd. I'll be out at the BART, baby. Baseball at the BART on Wednesday. It's crazy. I bet you'll be inside the press box. You're damn right I will be inside the <laughs> press box. I can guarantee you that. That is a fact. But looking forward to it. Um, they go back out on the road after that, but eh, something to do, right? For sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's crazy to be thinking that it's baseball time right now, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it is what it is. It's going to be very chilly this week I know, here in Bloomington. I know that. It's raining right now. Uh, how about the Pacers, man? They got thrashed in historic fashion. They got beat by 46, I think. 127-81 by OG in Toronto yesterday. Man, that's just a beat down. Yeah, it is. That is. I mean, that is – I don't even – I would say I don't know how to act in a game like that except for I I lost a couple of them that way. Been there like that. Yep. What is it – when you're in a situation – when you know you're not that kind of a team now, – now, this is the NBA, and I know it's different. In college, though, you were – the team that got beat like that, that was not a team that was 50 points worse than anybody. So what is that like when you know that you have a good team but you just get your butts – handed to you yeah i mean it's awful i mean it's it's, it's a terrible feeling because it, you know it, it's interesting how it works out this way but when when the momentum is on one side it just seems like every loose ball goes to the other team every every, every possible, shot goes in it, it is <laughs> like every you know the, when the ball bounces it, it seems to always bounce towards the the team that has the momentum it's just weird how that's the case and and, it, you know, it, it's a terrible scenario. Like I, I've said this before on here, and, and I know I've told people in person many times, you know, when we lost to Minnesota by 50 points, I mean, it, it was legit 50. I'm not rounding it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, we never one time, Coach Knight never one time spoke of that game. We never watched a game film. We never talked about it. We got on the plane, flew back, got home. Everybody went home. He didn't even talk to us. It was just – and then the next day of practice, we were preparing for the next game. It was just totally a disregard 
I, and I know. promise you, nobody in this world, fan wise, would would have thought that that's how that would have gone. They would have expected chairs thrown, uh, locker rooms torn up, blah 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 blah. Yep, not in a game like that. I mean, that's one that that he just. You know, if he ever wrote one off, he wrote that one off. And, and, and why? Because he knew that that was just yeah, something I mean, they got out of hand. Gonna, that really... What are you going to gain from it? I mean, we could take games that we won, and you could watch game film, and he could watch. We we could seriously – this is not an exaggeration. In, in a game film that we won – so take the game Indiana won yesterday. He could find a couple of plays that he just absolutely hated where guys were out of position or didn't do this or didn't do that. And we could watch that one play – you know, 30, 40, 50 times in a row. I mean, he would he would just run it back and back and back and back and back, and it was just constant watching the same thing over again. And so, you know, it, he would find something, especially if we had a point of emphasis. So if the, for this week, you know, we, we hadn't been blocking out very well, and all of a sudden we gave up, you know, two really bad offensive rebounds that resulted in a basket and a foul or something like that. I mean, we would watch that play to nauseam. And, and, you know, that was something that he was more, you know, more worried about. There were, there were games that people I think would be shocked that he, he didn't freak out about, you know, there were games that we played pretty well and lost and, and we all know that. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I mean, you know, what game film session is going to be like, and we had a ton of games that we won where we knew it was going to be a terrible film watching session because you know we knew you know what plays you miss and you know what rotations you miss and things like that and you know watching film is probably the worst part of of uh being a yeah it it really is (laughs) it's It's awful you're stuck in a room because it never changes berating you you can't go anywhere you're gonna get called out (laughs) yeah it's no And, and you've you've seen it before i mean you know what it's like when you know when something's going at game speed it looks one way, but then when you really slow it down, it looks a lot worse and we would slow it down a lot. I can't imagine with today's technology, how they're able to, you know, slow things down and look at them from different angles and that Cuban 360 degree thing they've got there. I mean, I I can't imagine how bad I could look on game film in today's world. Somebody who's not looking bad at all right now, Trace Jackson Davis. Earlier when I was talking to Don Fisher, he, he mentioned that that, that uh, Trace Jackson Davis probably going to be freshman of the week. And I'm thinking, freshman of the week, hell, how, how's he not going to be player of the week? Coming off of uh, two double-doubles, his ninth of the season, 27 and 16, 13 and 10. That's player of the week, man. Yeah, it's it's a good chance of it. And, and you know, he, he is um, – he had some plays yesterday that were – uh, I, I would love to get like a candid interview with Lamar Stevens about him because there was a couple of plays yesterday and one in the first half in particular where there was a ball that came down and it was kind of a, I won't say a loose ball, but it was a ball where Lamar Stevens kind of, oh, I think uh, Trace Jackson Davis missed his own shot, got his own rebound, and Lamar Stevens had a hold of the ball. And with two hands, Trace Jackson Davis just yanked it from him and laid it back in and got fouled. And... And I think – I believe that was might have been the foul call where they changed the foul from Lamar Stevens to, to the other guy. Yeah, that was another uh, – that was a but, – But, I mean, it was – it was just one of those things like when, freshmen generally don't yank the ball out of Lamar Stevens' hands. And and it was – I mean, it was forceful and aggressive. And and that's one where you're like, okay, yeah, he's he's a little bit. Different it's a big than boy move. Freshman. It was big boy for sure. That's a big boy move, and he's grown up. That he would. I don't think that's something he would have done two months ago. Yeah, I mean, one of his strengths is is I guess his strength and and two hands on the ball. When he has two hands on the ball, you don't get it from him very often. And and he goes up for a lot of rebounds and stuff with two hands. And once he gets it, it's his, and you're not getting it away from him. And that's something. that's generally not something you say about freshmen. Trace Jackson Davis came to Indiana, not a skinny boy. He was not a freshman. That boy, he's got his size. He's got very strong legs. He's Carl Malone to me. He's Carl Malone. I I can see that now that you say that because as young as he is, my gosh, he's already thick. He's already got an incredible foundation of strength, and you just talked about that as well. I mean, wow, that can really, really just do nothing but continue to grow for him and make him a dominant player. He's already becoming that. I mean, yeah. twenty-seven and sixteen is a fresh, and we're talking about a, a player, a player of the week in the Big Ten. Okay, for a freshman, 
That's gigantic to be able to do in the Big Ten. In this in this league this year of all years, that's a that's a that would be a crazy accomplishment. Yeah, no, it would. And and you know, all year long it's kind of been funny. If you're a freshman in the Big Ten, other than Kofi Coburn or or Trace Jackson Davis, I mean you've had a tough time breaking into the player of the week category because those two guys have basically just gone back and forth. Uh, I think Kofi Coburn's had it the most so far, but Trace Jackson Davis is right behind him. And, uh, I mean, they've just kind of traded back and forth weeks of who's going to be player of the week. And, and you know, it, it it's, a, it's a good league, and it's a, it's interesting. You look at those two guys and you talk about them as freshmen. I mean, obviously, the Green Mile is not built like your average freshman, and neither is, is Trace Jackson Davis. So, I mean, those two guys are just they're, – they're men for sure. Yeah, and that's certainly something Indiana's going to need as you go to, to get into the tournament because that's a different level of play. The tournament is called differently than the regular season. For one thing, you've got different sets of officials. You've been you've had a, a Big Ten officials all year. Now you move out into the world, so to speak. Man, it's a mixture, and those games are called differently in the tournament. Sometimes we see them where they, they really hold the whistle. Sometimes we see them calling ticky-tack, but it's usually always different than what you've played during the regular season. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's something you got to adjust to a little bit. But, you know, truly in, in today's world, so many of these officials are, are kind of, you know, they're multi-conference officials, and they're That's you'll true. see them doing Big Ten one night, you'll see them doing the ACC the next night. But, you know, I, I think the physicality of the Big Ten generally helps out um, you know, teams that are defensive minded generally do better in the NCAA tournament, but, but then, you know, it, it's all, it's all kind of how the year goes because, you know, there's years when the big 10 does awesome in the NCAA tournament and there's years when it doesn't do well at all. I mean, heck what it's been an insane amount of years since a big 10 team won the national championship, hadn't it? And I saw that stat the other day, wasn't it? Whenever Michigan state won it last, probably that, uh, yeah, that's, what, 17, 18 years back? Like two, it's been a while. 2000, 2001, something like that? Has it been? Michigan, yeah, I, may have been 99? No, Michigan State, I think, won one in the early 2000s. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, the team Cleves and all that, that group, I think. But still, it's been a long time since the Big it's, Ten team. It's been too long. Won it, yeah. Uh, but this is a year where I guarantee if anybody says they know who's going to win the national championship, they're an idiot. Um they're just lying to you because, man, you can just take a whole bunch of teams, put them in a box and shake them up and just start pulling names out. But I tell you, there are some teams that are definitely sticking their head up a little bit. That doesn't mean a lot, but, you know, Kansas, Gonzaga, even though they just got beat, speaking of that, uh, St. Mary's, no more undefeated teams. Todd, uh, St. Mary's goes down, Gonzaga goes down. You mean San Diego State. San Diego State, rather. What was I saying? You said St. Mary's, but. I knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah, San Diego we State. Did you uh, see who's an assistant coach for San Diego State? I don't think so. Former Indiana assistant Tim Buckley. Oh, no, really? Yep. I saw him on the bench the other night. I texted him as soon as the game was over because I saw that he was an assistant coach. He's been with the Timberwolves as a scout for the last few years. Ever well, who's since. coaching San Diego State now? I didn't even recognize who he was. I don't know who he is. I mean, it was it was Fisher for the longest time, right? Yeah, no, he's not there anymore. He retired. But, uh, yeah, they – you know, you get some teams out there on that West Coast that don't play uh, – Gonzaga's another – they don't play exactly the, the toughest schedule. Um, well, definitely San Diego State doesn't. I mean, no. their, their schedule is not – I mean, they lost at home to UNLV. So a, that makes me – that begs the question, though. How fair is it that a San Diego State who doesn't play hardly anybody is going to end up being a damn number one seed when you got the winner of the Big Ten who has been through an absolute bloodbath for three months? Um, yeah. I, I just don't – to me, that's BS. I, I'm with you. I, I agree. I and here, Here's what I don't get is – so that one loss is a bad loss. I mean, you – they – San Diego State lost at home to a team that's not going to make the NCAA tournament. And so you got to look at that and be like, yes, they should be penalized. I mean, I I listened to Joe Lenardi not very long after that show was over, and he still said, you know, they possibly may drop to a two, but he wasn't sure if they would or not. And I'm sitting there going, they should drop to a three or a four. Yeah, you have to penalize those teams extra when they lose a game that they definitely should not lose. And they because, don't play anybody. 
Yeah, because they, there is no way. But but then here's here's going to be the argument. So who do you replace them with? I mean, can you replace them with Duke? Duke lost at home to you know a quad three team. So I mean, you you can stand here and make the argument back and forth all day long. My my whole point, and that's because I'm big conference bias, is you know if, if those teams lose a game, they should be extra penalized yep. because they don't have to night in and night out defend themselves the way these big conferences do. Absolutely. We got tons more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat with Corey O'Leary on this Monday. Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier is going to join us in the next hour. We got plenty to talk about. Uh, the NFL Combine has started. We'll hear from uh, Justin Smith. Plenty more basketball to talk about as well. Stay tuned. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Corey O'Leary coming to you from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios. We're back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Docker. Hey, this is Michael Lewis, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18-wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Cole. I would say, I mean, I mean, we lose a couple in a row. Everybody counts us out. Everybody wants to freak out. But we never waver. Um, this is a tough league. All the teams are good, pretty much. And, you know, they're going to get you a couple times. But it's always how you bounce back. And... We responded really, really well, and we're just going to build on this momentum going forward. There's Justin Smith. No time to freak out, and they're not, he said. Uh, you can tell. They're looking good, uh, feeling confident. Uh, they, they certainly are exhibiting the confidence that he seems to be espousing. Well, I mean, yeah, for two games they have. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and, and, you know, that's what we have to go off of. I exactly. Just, I, I don't want to – 
uh, I don't want to try to turn a positive into a negative here because we, you know, they're playing well right now. So let's ride it. And, exactly. and hopefully they put all the other crap behind them. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I mean, there's nothing that you said. It. There's nothing else you can do. I mean, if we want to sit here and just blah, blah, blah. Well, well, that's, there's no, that's pointless then. So let's head toward the end of the season. And, and, I, and I gotta, I gotta get, I want to make sure I give Archie Miller credit because, hey, I, I'm as hard on him as anybody. And he deserves that, but he also deserves the credit for them playing well. Uh, maybe he's getting, maybe he's finally reaching them. I don't know. Maybe that uh, he's heard those questioning the, the toughness of this team and punching the clipboard. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And it's ironic, Todd, that that was on the 35th anniversary of Bob Knight throwing the chair is when that occurred. And had that been Bob Knight, let me tell you, that would have been seen around the world. It would have been seen everywhere. I just watched it and I'm shocked. It hasn't, it isn't everywhere. I mean, because he punched the fact that he punches it out of his hand. That's 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 Bob Knight esque. I mean, you're not going to get it's it is. I like, and here's the thing: like, I'm not trying to make it a big deal. Oh, me either. I'm not complaining. I I like, like yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think almost the Hoosier fans do. But that's what I mean. Archie is 100 percent basketball. Like, like that's what he's not out there. That was over a free. That was over a missed free throw. By the way, right. And, you know, that, that's just when, I mean, he's 100% engaged. He's totally engaged in that game, and he knew he knew what a big moment that was and how the game was still kind of in limbo. And, um, I mean, it's a big deal. And, and, and I, But, I mean, I don't – like, I don't mind that at all. And, and I'm glad it hasn't been blown out of proportion because, you know, I mean, that's just – that's just him being fired up. That's the Archie Miller I remember as a player. Kind of funny. You can't lie. I mean, it's <laughs> – I watched it a whole bunch because it was kind of funny because he yeah. punched he punched the crap out of that thing, man. He really did. He he hit it hard and and but you know I mean that's that's just kind of the way it is. I mean I don't I don't have any issue with that. I hope nobody else does either because that's that's what you want. And I you know I want the players to get that fired up about missing a shot or do, or missing a block out or doing something like that. I mean. That never bothers me. Well, Jake just sent me a message showing uh, the reaction of Eric Gordon to a clip of Archie doing that, and he says, I like his attitude, exclamation point, exclamation point. And that's coming from a big-timer uh, playing for Houston right now. But, yeah, I, I think I think almost all Hoosier fans are happy to see that. They want to see some fire, especially after a season in which that's the one thing they haven't seen a whole lot of. So I, I think they welcome this. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it's it, it's no big deal. I mean, truly, if if it if it got blown into something, it'll just be because somebody in the media wants to make it a big deal because it was definitely no big deal. No, and it's and it's warranted to me. I'm like, I'm that I, I can understand the frustration over missed free throws at that point. He's like, gee whiz, what does it take? Right. And I think he's sending a message though to his team that this is not acceptable. These are important and critical, and they're going to become even more critical as they move forward. They've got to tighten that up, and I think that whatever it is, he's trying to send a message to his team because I don't know how the hell else you fix free throws because it's all in your head. Yeah, and I mean, you know, how many times did did you hear over the years, and it's funny how they get excuses made for them, but how many times did you hear over the years for about Coach Knight of listen to what he says, not how he says it? And oh, things yeah, like that. And, you know, like, I mean, they're they're always making excuses for stuff like that, and it, and I I truly believe the team. Like, here's what I, here's what I, here's the approach I take with that is I try to treat these guys like like men. They want to be treated like men. They don't want to be treated like boys or kids. And and so I give them credit when they're in a situation. I mean, they know what Archie's like. They know Archie's fiery, and that's not going to bother them. They're if if that bothers anyone, it it would surprise me. Let's just put it that way. And I mean people on the team. And so, you know, they know Archie's a fiery guy. I've been to practice. He doesn't walk around there patting everybody on the back, telling them how great they are. I mean, he's uh he's aggressive and he's he's mean and loud, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's what every coach I've ever had has been that way. And and I think you feel the same way. I mean, that's that's part of coaching in the way it is. You don't always have to walk around you know, smile and telling everybody how great they're doing. And, you know, I, I just, I, th- that's what Archie is. And I think these, these players on the team are men and they understand that, that, you know, he's, 
he is bought in a hundred percent and he knows how important that stuff was. I think if those guys would have been, would have had the opportunity to punch a clipboard, they'd have done it too. <laughs> I guarantee you how many fans would like to punch. There's probably a lot of that are punching clipboards. I mean, well, I, we throw stuff like why, that's why I hold a, a soft ball in my hand while the game's going on. So I can throw it at something and not break it. Cause <laughs> I've broken too many things over the years. <laughs> Oh, all the fun. It's all fun. Uh, Mike Schumann is going to be joining us here uh, in this hour. Looking forward to that well, as well. All the fun. Ah, oh, Mike, I love that. NFL love Combine that. getting underway up in, in Indianapolis yesterday, man. Uh, Joe Burrow's in town. Tua! Jordan Love. Uh, you ready to- I hope Tua just packed all his stuff and he can just stay here after the draft's over. Yeah, good luck with that. I don't see that happening. Uh, <laughs> it would be good. That, that, But it's going to be very interesting. Interesting. Who? Because they they've got to pick up somebody. I would think. Yeah, you would think. I mean, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm up for drafting somebody. And I read a quote. Jim Irsay. Jim Irsay came out and said he's not ruling out Andrew Luck coming back. Oh, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> what Jim is Irsay that? Was... What is that dude smoking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think don't he's got do his... your impersonation. Don't do it. He's got his own man. He's got his own stuff. I think he grows his own. <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> Just for you. Uh, t- I-, I saw Christian yeah, Lander walking around yesterday when I was walking around the back side of the-, the hall behind the lockers and whatnot. I was talking to, well, with me and Mike were having a conversation. And then Christian Lander, I saw him walk by. He was there yesterday. Great game for him to see. We've talked about this in, in the instances where all these recruits are at games where the team doesn't play well and the, and the guys always think, well, I'm the guy that can come in and do that. What is it when the situation is like yesterday when they do play well, but it, it, to me it's like, oh, yeah, I want to be a part of that. Is it that situation? For sure, yeah. I mean, you know, it, here's the thing. Like Indiana fan base, uh, you know, they take some heat and some criticism for being too critical and being too negative and being too boisterous and too a whole bunch of different things. And – but on the flip side of it, they're there all every they're there every game. They care about it. If you uh, who wants to go play at a place where you know the the fan base is kind of ho hum, you know, I mean that's that's just kind of that that's the way I look at it. And if there's a player that is making his college decision based on how negative the the fan base is, then I don't want him to come to Indiana anyway. Yeah, and I'm not saying that to be like a tough guy or mean or anything. Like we all say, we want hard nosed kids that that can take coaching and take some criticism and improve and get better and and all that. And and you know that's that's a part of life. I mean, these kids are not going to get jobs later on in their life where they're going to walk into work every day and everybody's going to go, "Hey, you're doing a great job, Mikey." <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it's uh, not the way it works. A lot of back, a lot of back patting. I mean, every morning we get on here, we tell Jake all the mistakes he makes and all the stuff he does wrong, and we just we ride his butt. I mean, that's what we're that's what we're here to do. We're trying to make him better. Make him better. Got to send right. him out in the world, make him better. That's right. We're doing this for you, Jake. <laughs> this hurts us way more than it hurts. It hurts you. us to have to do this to you, Jake. But but oh my God, if I ever if I ever hear that one time in my life again, I will just I don't know what I'll do. But uh-huh. This hurts me much more than it does you. <laughs> I mentioned earlier, man, there are seven quarterbacks still in the transfer portal. One of those is Peyton Ramsey. Uh, for those of us who thought that he was probably gone to Fresno State, hasn't happened yet. Um, doesn't mean a lot, I guess. This isn't hasn't happened yet because the school year is not even over, so I don't know how much it matters. But I would think they want to be wherever they're going to go for spring ball. Sure, which is not that far. Which is actually going on. Will, will be going on this semester, so they can't participate in that. I guess if they're staying, if they didn't transfer. Well, the all semester. the ones who didn't transfer, would you not assume are all going back? That well, that's the next. That is that's what leads to my next question uh, with Peyton Ramsey. Not having made – maybe I don't know if they wait to make the announcement or – but it hasn't happened, so I'm like mm. – so, yeah, I, that, I wonder. I'm wondering that very thing is, is – so. and, and the transfer portal is new. I mean, it's not new this year, but it's new in relative terms to how long it's been around. And so I think this is, like, this is how we learn about it. This is how we learn the process of how – you know, what's the best thing for kids to do. It's almost like – you know, kids that get to enter the NBA draft in basketball, as long as they don't hire an agent, they get to come back 
And, and, you know, I think it's a little bit similar. There's some similarities to it in that kids can put their name in there and see what's out there. I mean, what if Peyton Ramsey, you know, what if, what if LSU decided that they needed Peyton Ramsey? I mean, that, that, I think that'd be a good transfer for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, but then also on the flip side of it, I know you and I talked about uh, who was the coach that said, if you enter the transfer portal, I'm not taking you back. I can't remember who it was. Oh, I don't either. Um, but we talked about it here on the show one day and, and we were like, well, yeah, I mean, if you enter the transfer portal, you're kind of, I, I think it might've been flat, the guy from Minnesota. DJ, no, I can't see PJ saying that. I can see Mark D'Antonio saying that. It definitely wasn't him. But anyway, I mean, it's just one of those scenarios that, you know, I I, I don't know enough about it to know if it's offensive enough, like, like, hey, I, you know, I don't want to play here anymore, or if it is, hey, let me just see what the best options are out there. And I think Tom Allen would understand Peyton Ramsey's position. Oh, absolutely. Given the fact that, you know, Michael Penix is, is a guy that, uh, probably is going to win the starting job. Probably, I will say, will win the starting job. That's already won. You don't know that. I do know that. They've come. Oh, they've come out and said it. <laughs> so I mean, he said How that. Could they? The guy hasn't played a single. He's their season. starter. He is the starter. He hasn't lost his job. He was just hurt. He's still the starting quarterback. Tom Allen has said that very okay. thing. Okay, but the job will be open. And it, let's just say, here's what, you don't, here's what you don't know. If Peyton Ramsey comes out and has and improves a ton, improves a ton. Now, I'm, I'm not saying he's going to. I'm saying if he's got, he's got six more months to go before they play a football game. If he improves a ton, is, there's a chance he could win that job. If, if he comes, he comes back. back. <laughs> if he comes back. Jake, Jake chiming in. The Tuttle, the Tuttle guy could win the job. Yes. Good. Good. And he could have he could have this could be the year he sprouts and And Joe Namath can be reincarnated and come back, but I don't think that's gonna happen either. He's not even dead yet. That's true. That's that's a good catch. He's not although he's been pickled over for many, many years, <laughs> yeah. but he's not dead. He's not physically dead yet. Man, one of my greatest funniest moments of all time. And I and it's not one of his greatest moments though, but when he was <laughs> Susie Culver. I want to kiss you. Oh, you're so pretty. <laughs> and I, I always had a crush on her. She was as cute as could be, man. But uh yeah, that was that was kind of funny. My man Jonah played for my Rams when I was growing up when he was career was ending. The LA, the LA Rams when his career was going out. But yeah, there's a lot of uh there's seven quarterbacks in the portal, and these guys are from big time schools too. USC, oh yeah, they're all from big time schools, man. But that's these schools like like USC, like Ohio State, that have three, four quarterbacks right. that are freaking four stars or higher. Right. Um, yeah, not many programs have that. Well, you saw it with Ohio State. Their their quarterback they got came from somewhere else. Their quarterback left and went to what Georgia. Jake, Fra- I mean, it was it's crazy. It's no, just funny. their quarterback was J- Joe Burrow, who ended up at LSU. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> they what it took. Was. They took. Uh, Justin Fields from Georgia. Now Jake Fromm from Georgia went to the draft, and so they'll have, they'll need a new quarterback. So yeah, it's it's just a big carousel. Speaking of which, uh, Mike Schumann coming up next here on Indiana Sports Beat from the Daily Hoosier. We'll talk to uh, Michael and plenty more after that. Stay tuned. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios on this Monday. We're back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. 
pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Docker. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with the Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18-wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat. Coming to you from the Golf Company of Point Studios on this Monday. Joined now by our good friend Mike Schumann from the Daily Hoosier. Michael, how are you? Doing great, Jim. How are you? Good, good, man. Lots to talk about. Indiana basketball, of course. We'll get to that. But uh, some news over the weekend that, uh, not a little just disturbing or sad to hear, uh, Peyton Hendershot, a, a starting tight end for the Indiana football program. And I talk about all the time how we don't. there's no trouble within these programs and all that. And Peyton goes out and gets himself arrested. And this is kind of serious. I mean, this is this would be bad for him. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it's very serious. And and credit to John Blau of the Herald Times for for breaking that story yesterday. But you know, obviously, the the details that have come out since that story broke are are, are not 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 a good situation. And very very unfortunate. You know, domestic violence, obviously, a very serious situation. And well, these like and these don't, don't forget these are all allegations. We absolutely. Don't know. Absolutely. We don't know. Uh, I, I think break, there was a breaking and entering charge of a former girlfriend, I think. Right. Um, and then there ended up being a, a domestic battery charge, I think. Yeah, the, the the story that came out later after additional police reports came out is that is that he broke in and, and ended up with his hands around the victim's neck. And she called the police at that point. So, you know, I, obviously not, not a good situation at all. And, and one that's going to be really hard for, for Indiana to, to deal with, you know, from. I'll be honest with you. It's going to be hard for Peyton Hendershot to come back from that. I, I think because Tom Allen is, we, we know the kind of person he is and the kind of program he runs and as good as Peyton Hendershot has been, and he's been a great kid. Uh, I, I, I think this is going to be very difficult for him to come back from. Yeah. I mean, it, it puts coach Allen in a really tough spot because of the way he runs his program. As you said, you know, the, the whole Elio, Elio culture, you know, you get a situation like this that runs, you know, completely against what, what he's trying to establish there. And, you know, the, the statement that would be made if he, if he's allowed to come back, 
um, it, you know, you, you want to give guys a second chance, but at the same time, you know, that that's a very serious issue. It's, it's an issue that rightly is under a lot of scrutiny, you know, or, around the world right now. And so it's, it's not to be at all taken lightly. Not at all, and I'm certainly they won't. Uh, but uh, moving along to the basketball side of things, we've been talking about it, of course, all day long, me and Todd. And uh, this Indiana team looking pretty good now, obviously coming off a gigantic win over number nine Penn State yesterday as they move forward now that they move on to uh, Purdue. But uh, a, a great game for, for Trace Jackson Davis. I was talking to Todd. I don't see how he's not the player of the week in the Big Ten, not freshman of the week. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Very well could be. I tweeted out last night, freshman of the week, but, you know, I, I haven't looked at what everyone else has done over the last week, but he averaged 20 and 13 over the two games. I doubt too many people put up a stat line anywhere close to that. So it, he, he's definitely he's definitely got to be right up there for consideration. I mean, he, even during that game yesterday, he kind of evolved. I think there was a stretch there. It was the same stretch where Indiana was playing poorly by by no coincidence where you know, he was getting the ball in the paint and he was just kind of going up, you know, I, I don't know if soft's the right word, but he wasn't, you know, putting his shoulder down and really forcing the issue. He was kind of fading a little bit and he kept missing, kept coming up short, but then, you know, as the game progressed, he he got back to doing what what he's been doing well and you know, I think even if he goes 6 for 17, I think a lot of good things happen there because, you know, I think he, Indiana can get offensive rebounds if he misses. There's kickouts to perimeter shooters. You know, I think the clear emphasis on Trace getting touches in the paint. And, and oh, by the way, the I think the the lineup where he and Race are in there together. That's something I'm going to take a look at later today. Is just how productive that particular pairing is when they're on the floor together you know i know i know race isn't starting but he's quickly becoming he's quickly getting starter minutes and he deserves every bit of it well todd has his preference on lineups and for that very reason you're talking about and todd we've talked about a lot the effectiveness of various rotations and lineups in there and would like to see them more minutes at a time yeah and and you know one of the things that I don't, I, I just, it just doesn't make any sense to me is when you've got one of the bigger guys in there in Brunker, Deron Davis, you know, it generally one of those bigger guys on the other team is guarding them. And, you know, th- that when you put that person, you take them out of the lineup and you have that person guarding Trey Jackson Davis, generally he's got a speed advantage, um, you know, if, a quickness, if nothing else, to where he can make his moves around the basket and, it just changes the overall dynamic of Indiana's team, and and I, I like the way they play that way better. I mean, I think it's been Archie Miller talking about you know since last fall talking about this team was going to play faster, yet he kept putting a lineup on the floor that that wasn't conducive to that. And I just I think now they're t- they're starting to see, um, you know, the, the team play a little bit more with more pace, and and guys are healthy. You know, one of the one, we just, we just, it's unexplainable to me, and I'm sure there's a reason for it. I'm not going to be the guy to ask, but uh, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming he's just going to keep starting the same lineup and then working it to the point where you've, he's got race in there, I guess. But I mean, the last four halves have all started with Joey Brunk. The first sub has been Deron Davis, and then Race Thompson's come in the game. And I just, I don't understand why it goes in that order. Yeah, I guess, I guess you answered. My question, Todd, I was going to ask you if you could think of a, you know, anything from a team perspective as to why he would stick with that starting lineup in both halves if it wasn't something that he really intended to, you know, allocate the minutes accordingly. I, I can't think of anything product production wise. I don't think he's getting much out of that starting lineup. It, it's it's an interesting thing. I think if no one else asks it, I'm going to ask it this week because you know I, I don't think it's a question that you're you're asking like what the hell are you doing? It's just like you know philosophically, you know what, what's your thought process on on sticking with that lineup if if the minutes don't follow? And the and truly the the answer might be. I mean, this is the only thing I can make out of it is that. You know, all teams substitute, and, you know, maybe he's trying to match up the timing of when race comes into the game and Indiana plays faster with when the other teams make their first substitutions, which is generally that 15-minute mark, which is right about the time he's been bringing race in. Um, it's just so happened for I, – I think it's all four halves. I think it's, it's both halves of the last two games – 
that he's had to take Joey Brunk out before the 18 minute mark. He's either gotten a foul or got abused or somebody went around him or he gave up a layup or something. And he's taking Joey Brunk out immediately. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this as a player. Um, and I, I know this is not the goal. And I, obviously we, we know Joey Brunk is a great person and kid and we know he's, he's important to this team, but you want to talk about something that hurts your confidence and ego the most. It's start the half and come out, you know, one minute and 15 seconds into the half. Right. And, and that, that to me is what I, that's what I don't understand with, you know, maybe it's working out because they're getting race in there at the time they want race to come in there. But, you know, it, he hasn't so far, he hasn't substituted race in for Joey Brunk. He has put Deron Davis in for him and then brought race Thompson in after that. And I just, I'm not understanding that, that rotation. Yeah. And I don't know that, uh, I, I would not be surprised to see it change at some point, because if you looked at the, I don't have this these numbers, but it just if you took the starters for the last two or three games and took the average time played by each starter, I, I think it's going to look really weird when you see like a 22, 26, 25, or what an extra four of the players, and then one of them you're going to see six. Sick, right. It, it's just going to be it's weird. Been. It's going to be weird. Yeah, and I – you know, I, I think Todd, you might be on to something. I suspect this might be where where Archie goes, just from a kind of maybe having a better bench than your your opponent. You know, you're bringing in Thompson, you're bringing in Hunter Green, Davis. I don't think too many teams in the Big Ten can match up with the way those guys are playing right now. And we saw yesterday Indiana's bench outscored Penn State twenty five to twelve. I think most of their their big runs in both halves were were after some of those guys had come into the game, so that could be where he was going. But but <laughs> that's the thing. But the thing, Mike, is if they're not going to their bench, then you've got your bench players against their starters, which right. that's probably not going to be a positive outcome. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, and, and the matchups are just too weird for me when when you got Trace and Joey and Justin on the game. I mean, you saw right at the start of that game. You had Trace trying to guard Lamar Stevens on the perimeter, and Stevens went right past him. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it it just doesn't. You know. I just. It's rare to see a game where where those that lineup's going to work. You know. Maybe if Purdue on Thursday goes with Harms and Travion Williams in their starting lineup, that you know you're you're not getting beat too bad against that particular grouping. But for the most part, you're playing a, a team with a big man and four guys out on the perimeter. Well, and I said it earlier in the first part of the show, but. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna use those lineups, and I'm <clears throat> I'm all about, you know, sporadically putting in and, and using them for stints of of Joey Brunk and Deron Davis even, but but they are such liabilities on defense. Like I don't know if it's just because you know, in, in the the Illinois game may be one of the games, and in the Purdue game may be one of the games those guys can play more minutes because they can match up specifically with Travion Williams and Kofi Coburn. Right. You know, those guys are not going to step out on the floor. But that's that's really the only two teams that have a player that's like that. Every other team has a big guy that's going to step out and make three-pointers. And when when you have that, you cannot – there's no one that's going to convince me Joey Brunt can guard anyone at the three-point line. And, and they can't guard – and neither can Deron Davis. And so other than the, the next two games that Indiana has – I mean, there's really not a player that those guys can defend. And so that's why I said earlier in the show, if you're going to put those guys in there, I don't care if you even start out in or while they're on the floor, play a 2-3 zone. Because <laughs> because I'd stick them in the middle of the lane and let them stand in there and, and clog it up. Yeah, But but they can't go out and defend people on the three-point line. They've proven that themselves. It's not me suggesting it. They're proving they can't do it. And My, it, it go, go ahead. Jim. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, and it doesn't – it's not really a knock on them in my perspective. It's not. To me, it's putting players in the wrong position. <laughs> totally agree. I, I'm not ripping. I, they're, they're both great kids. It's not, it's not that I want to say something bad about them. It's, I'm just pointing out the facts. If you watch them guard somebody on the three-point line, they literally go right around them. So yesterday, in Trace Jackson Davis having to guard Lamar Stevens, that was putting him in a real bad position to pick up an early foul. And and how do we all think this game goes if we, Trace Jackson Davis has to sit out for foul trouble in this game? Right. So right. that the lineup just put Trace Jackson Davis in a tough position yesterday. Fortunately, he just was smart enough to not get in foul trouble and strong enough to overcome uh, overcome it. Mike, uh, 
One thing that's not been talked about a lot during this this resurgence uh, for Indiana is how this is going to help in recruiting. Yesterday, I noticed Christian Lander was there. Saw him walk by when we were talking. Actually, uh, he walked by us, and uh, there was I think Anthony Leal was there yesterday. But this has got to be a because we've seen Archie talking to some other guy. Guys, uh, got to be a benefit for them in recruiting. Yeah, I mean. I, I don't know ultimately how important winning an individual game is to recruiting, but just getting a program, you know, going, getting some excitement, you know, get changing the narrative, which I think has happened over the, the last week to two weeks. It, it, it can't be hurtful. You know, you're talking about guys sitting there watching a team play probably its best 30 minutes that it's played all year. There, there was a 10 minute stretch in there. That was one of the worst it's had, strangely enough, but you know, I, I thought it was, you know, you don't want to put too much into, into one game. But for me, what, that what stood out is that you had your top recruiting target in 2021, Lander, sitting there right next to Anthony Leal, who's already signed with the program, who who has become good friends with each other and were AAU teammates last summer. You know, that, that that's a good thing to be able to do that for a couple hours and establish or further those relationships um, and, and the fact that Indiana knocked off a top 10 team in the process is just extra juice there. Yeah. And, and, and the atmosphere itself is one thing like that's a positive because the, you know, seeing the fan base and the atmosphere and, and all that, that, that is definitely a positive, but you know, I agree with you to elaborate on you saying, I don't know that one game makes that big of a difference. Here's what does make a difference. And that is your team making the NCAA tournament every year. And mm-hmm. Yeah, winning well, yes, that game is a big factor in it going that way. And and I can I can tell you, when you're a kid and you're trying to decide between programs, if you know you're making the NCAA tournament all four years when you're there, it's a determining factor. Now, the, these guys all have the opportunity to go play at places that probably all are going to be able to say that. And Indiana has to put their name in the ring of one of those places that is – you know, you, you can't go back and erase the past, and they've not made the tournament for a few years, and it's got to start now. And it's got to start with we make the NCAA tournament every year. That separates you from, you know, the majority of the of the rest of the country in recruiting. So it's yeah, just I mean, got to get to that point, and that's what that one win really does help yesterday. I mean, what do all these kids want to do? They want to make the NBA, and what better marketing spotlight is there than the NCAA tournament? You, you know, look at look at right now. If the kid from Georgia's team was really good, he would probably, without question, be a top three pick. Um, I can't remember his name, Jim. You usually know his name. Shit. Is it Cole Anthony? No, no, no. From Georgia, is it Edwards? Yeah, Ed- Edwards, Edwards. Anthony Edwards. Yeah. So that that kid, I, I mean, he was on a, three pick, if, his team's not going to make the NCAA tournament. And therefore, he's going to have to rely solely on the NBA camps and going there and dominating. Whereas if the scouts could watch him play in the NCAA tournament against other top quality kids that are also going to be drafted, it, it, he, could, he could almost skip the combine and, and not have to go and play in the, in the full court games out there. Because, but he's not going to have that opportunity. And that's where you know kids definitely look at the situation of – um, you know, they all want to play. I, I don't care who you are. Coach Knight, Coach Knight used to always say every game was just as important as the other one. But I'm telling you, when it was a CBS game, we pre- we prepared a little bit different than we did in the other ones. And when it was a – I don't mean the coaches. I mean, you know, we knew it was a CBS game. We knew when Dick Vitale was there. We knew when Jim Nance was there. We knew when the big-time announcers were there at the game. And, and it was – you just look at it a little bit different, and I think these players have that chance. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's my. I think that's Mike. Your microphone is scratching on your face or something. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 an opportunity. I think it's especially an opportunity for players not like him who don't get that attention, who don't get like he's going to be seen playing against Kentucky and those kind of teams. But there are guys that, that that you see in the tournament last year, like the guys for Texas Tech last year that were rated what three hundred recruits, and right. yet they're playing in the Final Four. So yeah. yeah, that's it's great opportunities for kids. And there, there's been guys that have come from nowhere. No, no one knew who they were. Had a great run in the NCAA and got themselves into the first round of the draft. Mitch McGarry out of Michigan a few years ago right. was a case in point. Yeah, no, you're you're right on. And and you know, you just look at 
if you want to, here's something I know. And, and hey, everybody's goal is to get to the NBA, and everybody's goal is to get paid and and make a living playing basketball. And and that's when you, you know, when you can have your family secure and the, you're playing basketball for a living. That that is the ultimate goal for every basketball kid growing up. But when you look at it from the standpoint of your college experience. I mean, the guys who had a, you know, Romeo Langford's never going to look back at his college experience and think, man, I loved college. But then you take a guy like Michael Jordan. I bet Michael Jordan does. You know, I bet Isaiah Thomas does. I bet, you know, Steve Alford does. And those guys got to enjoy college and they got to, you know, it, it's a, it's a awesome, fun part of your life. I mean, at the time, you feel like it's grueling and hard and all that until you get to be our age and you realize, gee, even Christmas, I didn't have a care in the world. And that's the experience that you're never going to convince these kids of that at this point. But that's the experience they need to be looking forward to, whether it's for one year in college or three or four or however it ends up being. Absolutely. Mike, uh, what you got coming up that the people need to read in the Daily Hoosier? Well, as I alluded to, I'm going to start kind of doing a deep dive into the numbers on, on race Thompson. I, you know, he's been widely discussed here the last couple of weeks, but I, I think, you know, just, it's hard to put a finger on all the things that he's doing. It's some of it's not statistical. Some of it's, you know, being a body in the post and things like that, but I'm going to try to come up with a way to put some meaning behind just exactly what he's meant to this team over the last two weeks. Cause I think we've all talked all year about a need for toughness and, and players that, that bring physicality in it. And if this team is changing right now, he's the reason why. And from a recruiting standpoint, Indiana, any new names? I know you, you've had some pieces I've seen, uh, names to know here of late. What, what are some of the new names that may have popped up that are really names that, that, that Indiana is really interested in? Well, the other kid that we didn't mention that was there yesterday is a really intriguing guy. He's plays for Westfield High School just north of Indianapolis. He's he's a five foot ten sophomore, and you and I saw him in the hallways. He yesterday. looked like he was he looked like an elementary kid. I, I bet he weighs about 140 would be would be my guess. If I sneezed, but, I think I would have knocked him over. <laughs> but, you know, if, if he was there yesterday, you know it's because he's doing special things. And everything I've heard about the kid, and I've watched him a couple times, you know, he's just he's got that, that it factor where, you know, the, he, everything, you know, he, he he's an excellent passer, first and foremost. He's a sh- great shooter, shoots 90% from the free throw line, I think 45% from three. Um, a, a guy that if he grows, you know, at least a couple inches, I think he's going to be a guy that Indiana takes very seriously. Absolutely. Well, make sure you check that out at thedailyhoosier.com. Michael, thanks for joining us, brother. All right, guys. Have a great one. See you, There's Michael Schumann joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Larry. We're coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, and we're back to finish it out right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 89 South Ian Avenue, Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red hat rimming at those worn during the world famous wood come out. Shank go Hoosiers. Like the other alum, I chose to make Blooming my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shad, with F.C. Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. 
Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times. The golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tee time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18-wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hi, this is A.J. Moye, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat on this Monday. It's February 24th. We're coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Jim Coyle and Todd Leary with you as always on this cold, rainy Monday. Perfect Monday, cold and rainy. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, man, it has been a uh, good week for Indiana as far as basketball. They, they finally got things rolling where they wanted to head, at least it seems. Can they keep it there? That's that's the thing, man. But I, I, I got to tell you, man, I, I've been impressed with it, and I've said it these last two games, of their resiliency. And doing it once is one thing, but they've done it back-to-back, and they did it against a damn good team in Penn State. So I, I, I am, I'm very encouraged, but there's still some things that really make you say, hmm, like the free throws. We've talked about the, the starting lineup thing. There are still things that really you question, and you're like, damn, this team could really take a step forward, maybe if some of these issues were resolved, of course. But that's that's the thing, and it's, we're not talking about hard things. We're talking about free throws, talking about starting lineups. These are easy things that are manageable. Yeah, and you know I, what I have taken most out of the last two games is Indiana's defense has looked pretty solid. Yes, they have, and and that's not something we've been able to say all season long, and and that is something you can take on the road with you, and you can go in the NCAA tournament with, and play a neutral site with and and so that's been that's why I'm probably even more optimistic than most after the last couple of games they've not had to rely on Devonte Green scoring 27 you know making nine threes or you know they've not had to rely on some fluke thing going on it's not been a gimmick defense it's it's really just kind of been straight up solid defense without fouling and and you know yesterday they gave up 27 points to uh, Lamar Stevens, who's one of the better players in the Big Ten, but he took 25 shots. I mean, from an efficiency standpoint, it, you'll take that any day of the week uh, as if you're Indiana. So, um, you know, it, th- this was the, – the the real highlight, in my opinion, of this last week was the solid defensive effort. And, and quite frankly, I think a lot of that has to do with the lineups that you're talking about and the fact that we had a faster lineup that I don't think you lose much physicality when you bring Race Thompson in for, you know, Joey Brunk or Deron Davis. I think he's he's a physical player. Also, <laughs> excuse me, also that just has a little bit more quickness and and ability to go get those re- tough rebounds. And and so you know that's been the key to me. I think defensively they've been solid. Yeah, it, it's just seeing all of that come together. And uh, man, and the emergence of Race Thompson. Uh, a kid that we've seen get hurt, come back, get hurt, come back. I mean, this dude has been – they're trying to keep him down, but they're not doing a very good job of it. And I, I'm really impressed with how the resiliency of this kid individually because nobody on this team has gone through more than he has. And, damn it, that dude just keeps coming back. Yeah, and, and if he can 
you know, if he could continue to gain confidence, I mean, he's not had a ton of floor time in his, you know, in all of his time in Indiana, he's not had a ton of floor time. So there is, there is some real uh, upside to him that I don't even think we've scratched the surface on yet. And, and, you know, he's a player, I, I, I've kind of watched him and it's kind of his pace of play and all that. But, but I think he's a player when he's a senior. Now, he's got a couple more years. He's got to develop this shot a little bit more. But I think he's a player that's going to be like George Nyang from, Ohio, from Iowa State a few years ago, who was a guy who could step out on the floor and be a threat from the, from the three-point line, but really shot faked a lot and got himself to the foul line and, and really contributed. Imagine Indiana right now if he was a guy that – they could count on for you know eight to 13 points a game I mean there's no way you'd be able to keep him out of the lineup at that point and and I, I truly think he can gradually get to that point I wish I'd have saw this when uh we had Mike on Tim uh t- hit the text line asking if we got Lander and Witt in 2020 because there's been some discussion of of both of those guys reclassifying uh and if I'm not mistaken they have two extra scholarships because Archie has not filled them in, in, two, in back-to-back years. Uh, some thought he may hold those to, to the 2021 class because it's such a huge class in the state of Indiana. But I think he sees the need a little sooner than that now instead of wasting, letting those scholarships go to waste that he can put those to use and get this team moving forward. Because I, in my opinion, he's a little bit behind recruiting. He passed on some guys that I, I promise you he's regretting right now that he did that. And so he's having to catch up a little bit uh, as far as having particular types of players on his team that he could have and he doesn't right now. Yeah. I mean, and, and they're going to, you know, they're going to need to replace, um, you know, some scoring when Devante is not here next year. Um, yeah, they, they just, uh, they need somebody that's going to be able to contribute pretty quickly or Al Franklin's or no. Yeah. Uh, Armand Franklin, Armand Franklin, <laughs> Al Franklin, is, Al Franklin. <laughs> Armand Franklin's really going to have to have a big time summer and improve, which I, I definitely think he's capable of doing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's a guy you look at and you're like, okay, you're a freshman. Eh, give you a couple minutes, but you could also see that he's got a high ceiling. Yep. Yeah. He'll be a very important player for this team. He just, uh, you know, he, he was thrown into the lineup early because of injuries. And I think now people are probably questioning, you know, whether, whether he was good enough to be doing that at the time. Um, but I mean, they didn't really have a choice and and it's experience that you can get. I mean, that's, that's invaluable. That will prove to be invaluable for him down the road. Indiana doesn't win the Notre Dame game. If it's not for him. Damn right. Now, one player we have not talked about at all, Demisey Anderson. And that's because Demisey Anderson has disappeared and that's leading to a lot of questions. Will he be on this roster next year? Yeah. I mean, and none of us know that answer, but I, yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just, it's a question. Unless there is a dramatic improvement in several different areas of his game, I can't see him being a huge contributor at Indiana. I don't, I don't think he's, I don't think he's good enough to play at this level, um, because he, you know, he doesn't really have a specialty. You know, if he was a really good shooter, that'd be one thing. Yeah, um, defender if he was crazy something. good athletic or a crazy good defender or jumper any of, rebounder any of something. those right i mean he's not super athletic um you know he's not he's he just doesn't seem to come in there and grab 11 rebounds and you know i mean if you're comparing him and race i mean they're not really comparable players race oh, is absolutely so much bigger not. than him and and he can't shoot the ball i mean i the uh, no one no one is going to convince me that he has ever been recruited as a shooter because i've seen him play for eight years now, and I, in AAU basketball, I can assure you, he was the guy we helped off of. And so that brings, with that, we just talked about the two open scholarships. You throw that into the mix, they could have half a new team next year or in twenty by 2021. Yeah, I mean, it really, it really could look like a lot different team next year, but I think, you know, as long as – you know, the names of Trace Jackson Davis and Rob Finnessy and Justin Smith and all of those are, are all the meat of the lineup. You know, I think that they can really bring in some players that can uh, that can really make them a pretty solid team. 
Yeah, because uh, they, like you mentioned, they lose Devontae Green. I don't care what anybody says or what they think about him. He's your best three-point shooting threat that they have on that team. And people talk about uh, Anthony Leo coming in. Anthony Leo has not shot a college three-pointer. I'm not disputing Anthony in his game. I'm just saying he has not shot the first in, uh, college three-pointer, which is two feet deeper than what he's currently dealing with. And he'll be a freshman. So you're not going to replace a, sa- a savvy veteran senior with a freshman. Uh, so that I think people need to get that out of their head. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been saying this all year long, and I have never wavered from it, is let Devontae play to what his strengths are. His strengths are shooting the basketball. And and you know what? Sometimes the worst shot that he takes is the one that goes in. And his degree of difficulty, he makes the shots harder than they need to be a lot of times. Um, he drives me nuts with that. <laughs> but he seems to make those. And. <laughs> You know what? Like, I don't. We're not. We're not even going to try to change Devontae. I don't know why anyone would ever say something like that. He's a senior. Let's ride him for what we what we need out of him for the last you know part of his career, and that is making shots. And every every time the ball comes out of Devontae Green's hands, it has a better chance of going in than any other player on Indiana's team. So why in the world would we ever want him to do anything other than shoot the ball? I, I don't think he's getting enough shots, and I don't care if he comes in firing like Vinny Johnson. I want him to come in off the bench and start – he is in there to shoot. He's not in there to distribute. He's not in there to screen. He's not in there to guard anybody. He's in there to shoot. End of story. And yeah, I know we've seen one for six, one for seven, oh for five. But, man, when he goes four for eight, If he doesn't go on seven, that stretch yesterday – I mean, they got up by 19 – because of him, he made two, two or three. I know he made two back to back threes. That I think he know, made. He hit. Didn't he hit that same three stretch in a row? Yeah, yeah three in a I row? think he made three in a row. I, I think, think he, he did three, too. He made three in a short stint. Let's put it that way. And, and you could tell he was feeling it because the second one he came down, and I think it was early in the shot clock. It was but a terrible shot. Looking. It was on the break. It was and he's shot. looking for that shot. He was yeah. looking for that before he got to the line. Yeah, no but doubt. he was feeling it. And he hit it, and then he did it again. And and that is that's what you want out of him. That's don't ever you know. That's why when he takes a bad shot and I hear the crowd groan, I'm like, gosh, people don't do that. Like, what more do you want from him? We don't want him to pass. I mean, Coach Knight taught me a real simple rule early on in my career, and that is you can't get a turnover by shooting the ball. <laughs> and and it's just it, it's true. Like it is. It sounds goofy. Like you're trying to be funny, but it's not. Like. Okay, I think how, his shooting has helped Al Durham's confidence as well because I think I've seen Al Durham step up a little bit, looking more confident in his long range shooting. And, and and you know what? It's been funny. Like early on in the game, Al has hit a timely three pointer. You know, I don't want to say every game for the last four or five games, but at least three quarters of those games, maybe all of those games, he's hit a key three pointer. You know, kind of early on in the game, and. That's a big deal. I mean, just having one or two other guys. I talked about it in the postgame show last night. The three-pointer Jerome Hunter made yesterday was probably the biggest shot of the game. And and Indiana was down by six. Jerome made one basket the entire game, and it was a huge one. And it was a big three-pointer that, uh, you know, I'm done trying to change Jerome Hunter too. Jerome Hunter, I mean, if he's going to come in there and shoot, come in there and shoot. You can't turn it over if you shoot it. Tim says, if you miss the shot, it's a turnover. <laughs> Not true. Indiana, Indiana gets a bunch of good offensive rebounds. They're one of the there best go, offensive Tim. rebound teams in the, in the country, and that's how they score a lot of their points. That's an excellent point. Uh, obviously, do we got any Big Ten games tonight? Yeah, you got one. You got uh, Nebraska at Illinois tonight. Wow. That's, the, that's an exciting night. We got any other good games? I'm trying to get it pulled. No. Get the schedule pulled up. No, it's Monday. Yeah. It's a typical Monday. You, you got, got Mondays. Louisville, Mondays Louisville, used Florida to be State. huge. It used Louisville, to be big Florida Monday. State. Yeah. You got Louisville, Florida State tonight. You got West Virginia and Texas. And then, you know, you've got Nebraska and Illinois, is really. Shock is smart in Texas, man. That experiment does not seem to be working to me. That's where I keep hearing John Beeline's going. Do you want the honest truth? Well, I, I can't. Uh, I'm. And but to me, for Texas, that doesn't seem like the right answer because they're looking for. A, he's not a long term answer. I don't think at sixty seven. No, I'm, I'm with you. I totally agree. I just I, I've heard a lot of that talk. And, well, but I, I have mean, too. You're right. I agree. And but I, I am yeah. really surprised that Shaka Smart has not has not done better there. I really am. Like he's. I, I thought he. I thought he would be a solid coach there. I thought it was a great hire. I thought it was a great choice for him. 
that's a place that can somewhat recruit. You know, they're getting run over by Baylor right now, and you know, I don't, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Tim wants us to come to Bubba's for the Purdue game. That's a night game, though. Seven o'clock. It's early. It's early. Yeah, yeah. I didn't bet. Rather do Bubba's on a weekend on a Sunday. Be a little easier to deal with. Well, you can next Sunday, two o'clock. We may have to do that. Who knows? But uh, we appreciate everybody joining us at Yogi's for after the game over the weekend. That was always fun. Had a, <coughs> excuse me. Had a great crowd Sunday. Man, that place was packed. Oh, it just doesn't stop. Many corn dog eating contests. Contact yeah, I won. I won. Thursday. I won. That was a no brainer. Man, we're back tomorrow with uh, Chronic Hoosier on the program. Looking forward to it as uh, Indiana is preparing to take on the Boilermakers up in West Lafayette on Thursday. Looking forward to that. We've got baseball opening up on Wednesday. Are you going to the baseball game? Mm. Not Probably. Todd's deal. Not yet. Is Tommy, like, is Tommy it's, pitching? It's too early. Tommy you know Summers what? That's a great question. I do, it's an, and it's a, a weekday game as opposed to a weekend. So I don't know who will pitch because it may be dependent upon – because he's probably – is he the Friday pitcher? Yeah. Because Beerman's Saturday, and I think Sunday – last year Sunday was committee. So, if he's Friday pitcher, I doubt that he will pitch in Tuesday's game. Just it's Maybe, Wednesday. maybe. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. I, I doubt that he'll pitch two days prior to a start. Right. Yeah, you know, so – We'll have to see who the starting lineup is. Look forward to it. But uh, we appreciate you guys joining us as always. Make sure you share the show out. Any opportunity you get, you get we appreciate it. Any format that you're listening on, leave us a, a, a comment. We always appreciate that as well. Uh, we thank you guys uh, for everything. We'll be back tomorrow, of course. Chronic Hoosier is going to join us. But uh, until then, the same bad time for Don Leary, Jake, I'm Jim Coyle, and I will see you on the radios.